The Marsh Boys Podcast is brought to you by Papa Earl's Cajun seasoning at its best. Use it on chicken, beef, fish, vegetables, Bloody Marys, and everything in between. Check out their fish fry for that perfect golden crispiness and that great Cajun flavor. And Top Down Decoys, the most affordable silhouette decoy on the market. Their horizontal and vertical styles are both a perfect fit for adding numbers to your snow, spec, and Canada spread. You can check out all of our great sponsors through the link in any of our social media bios. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy today's episode. Hey, take it! What was that? What did you just say? Smashing Basil. What is that? Have you not seen Austin Powers? No, I've never seen Austin Powers. Huh? Uncle Millard has. And you call yourself an American? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Say it. Mike Myers is playing every major role in that movie at the same time. Who's Mike Myers? I'm going to (laughs) stroke. I know who Mike Myers is, but no, I have not seen. Oh, yeah, he's the one that wears the mask. Oh no, that's Freddy Krueger. That's right. Mike Meyer hides in the corn. If I had a pacemaker, it'd be exploding right now. There'd be a flashing red light right here in my chest right now because of the things you're saying to me. I don't I know think you, you know what a pacemaker is. Makes your pace ten thousand steps a day, brother. Oh my god. And then when you need a little pick me up, you take some of the, what is it called? Nitro? Glycerin? I don't think, no, I don't, no, I don't think so. Pretty sure you take nitrous. Hold on. Do you take nitrous with a pacemaker? (laughs) How off are you? I accidentally searched it wrong, and it says the use of nitrous oxide in recently implanted pacemaker patients should be avoided because it causes expansion of gas in the pocket that causes loss of anodal... Anyway, if you do nitrous, it disconnects the power from your pacemaker, (laughs) so if you like whippets, don't get a pacemaker or vice versa. All right, good to know. All right. I know you've seen Austin Powers, and if you haven't, we're just chaining you to a chair, and it's going to happen. I actually haven't seen Smashing Austin Powers. Smashing Basil. Nope. Anyways, welcome back to the Mars Boys Podcast. We're here with episode 97. I'm Brian. I'm here for take two. Actually, take three, really. Take three. Yeah, that Camera was an stopped working. awful opener for yeah, you. I know. Well, I'm not doing the Randy Savage thing again. That You mean Hulk Hogan? No, that was from Randy Savage's point of view. Oh, was it? Yes. That's why he called him a hot dog. I'm not really sure why he called him a hot dog. Well, uh, he does. It's like the red and yellow from mustard and ketchup. I don't get it. That was before I was born. No, Hulk Hogan was not before you were born. That matchup was. Yeah, I know, but he was, he was well into the 2000s. I didn't even know nothing about WWE. That could be a big turn off to all the listeners. <laughs> what are you trying to say? It's fake. No, not I better what are you trying to say about our listeners? They like WWE. So now you're profiling? Dude, you watch NASCAR <laughs> highlights in your past time. I do and I was I very think upset. Stereotypes exist, brother. I was very upset to find out. That there will be no NASCAR or motocross for the next two weeks until August 11th. And why is that? I have no clue. Because they're stupid. But. Motocross I can get because there's rights and lefts. You've never seen a road race, have you? They're few and far between in the NASCAR world. Most of them are ovals. Keep it simple, stupid. I have a theory about NASCAR. Go ahead. What is a NASCAR fan's favorite thing to do while watching NASCAR? This isn't a theory. This is a joke. What is their favorite thing to do? What is it? No, you answer. This isn't the punchline. Drink? Yes. Okay. Now, the more you drink, the more swervy the road gets, and maybe they're starting to see rights and lefts by the end of the 500 miles. Oh, I thought you were going to go into, like, NASCAR should drink. 
<laughs> while doing. Oh, because... here's another stereotype we could talk about. At Ollie's, what did you get a message for? Oh, over yeah, here? I was going to say that anyway, since we were talking about NASCAR. So I get out of my truck and I hear ding, and I look down and I have a. <laughs> All I hear is, oh, shit. <laughs> I, have a, I have a new email. And Face ID lets you see the email before you open it. And it goes, congratulations on your winning bid. And I was like, what the hell did I buy? Because <laughs> I just go on eBay and bid on random stuff for like 99 cents a dollar. You know, just stupid shit. And I, I open my phone up and there's a picture of a set of, I believe it's five really thick, like... Dale be- Earnhardt <laughs> Jr. beer glasses. <laughs> Yeah, like the bar glasses. Like I, oh, I know what it was. I, I, fi- I figured it out. On TikTok, I saw these people make like a homemade bar, mm-hmm. and they had all these like really cool uh, bar glasses and stuff. So I, was, I just searched it. And what's the number one thing a redneck really wants? Anything to do with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Or that, that, yeah, yeah, that. But fancy glassware. So, I, so I actually, I didn't search, like, NASCAR beer glasses. I searched. They found you. They did, because I searched uh, bar gla- like bar, bar, gla- bar beer glasses or something. And there was, like, the second hit. Or, no, I. It, as, it was still in the sponsored listing? No, as white no. trash people normally do, I went to the first thing I did was went to sort, auction, or uh, filter, auction, and then sort, lowest price plus shipping. And that was the second thing that popped up. Popped up, ninety nine cents, and it was like four dollars shipping. And I was like, you know what? Those are pretty cool because they're a bunch of different tracks, like Daytona and whatever different tracks. And one of them had the eight on it. The other ones were Budweiser. So I hit bid, thinking like this was like a week ago. It was like the first day it was on there. Nobody else said to themselves, "Damn." <laughs> Budweiser NASCAR beer glasses. I want those. Just me. Just you. You're the only one in the country. <laughs> Apparently, out of the 10 million eBay users or whatever it is. How many people watch NASCAR every week? I don't know. A lot. I don't know. I guess I can Google it. How many people? So you can't tell me that stereotypes don't exist. Oh, they definitely exist. Around 3.85 million in 2024. My father's like six of them. (laughs) Six? Yeah. Let's he DVR it? Every TV in the house, brother. Nuh-uh. Yeah. I thought it was just a kitchen TV. And on the radio. Which, I don't know what they could tell you on the radio besides left turn. Actually, what's wild is, so if you look in in the stands at NASCAR, you'll see people with headphones on. They're listening. He has them. They're... Said his Uncle Miller. They're listening to the radio broadcast. Oh, no. Uh, my dad bought the ones where you can hear inside the cars. Like, hear them talking to the people. If, yeah, if you get the fancier ones, you could get the spotter scanner on. Yeah, they didn't work all that well, though. Well, yeah. It's, he's, like, hundreds of miles away from the track. No, at the track. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. They worked pretty well when we used them. We got them in the early or 2000s. I was still really young. When they came out. Have you ever been to a NASCAR race? Yeah, I've been to a lot of them. Really? I've been to the one in Tennessee. I've been to Russell. the one in Michigan. I've been to the one in PA. And I've been to, to the Dover 500. Hold on. Did your dad make an excuse to come see you just to go to a NASCAR race while you were in college? I'm going to plead the fifth. <laughs> yes, it is something we did. We did it before I even got in. It was... <laughs> We, hey, why don't we go we, check out this? We scheduled my college tour. Based on just, the NASCAR And it just race. happened to come in at the same time we could go see the race. What a coincidence. Your dad's an absolute legend. Oh, I lost. There's a contact. You know what else I saw in Michigan? A bunch of really drunk Samoans that sat behind us and watched NASCAR. Samoans? Like native Hawaiians. Oh. They were all like the rock, but fat. <laughs> Tattoos and all. The blub? Yeah. <laughs> Tattoos. They could have broken me in half with two of their meat fingers. They were that big? Yeah. Was it fat or muscle? Both. Uh. The stands buckled, brother. Oh, my. Because there was like six of them. 
I don't know where this contact went, and it's my last contact. So I guess I'll have to find it. Is it hanging in my eye somewhere? No. It's just laying in my beard? No, I think you're just going to have to top this one out, homie. There it is. Hold on. You're going to have to cut this part out, too, aren't no, you? No, I'm not. You're not? We're just going to run with it? We're just rolling it. You're supposed to be supporting the audience. Or All right. Whatever that word is. Oh, I can't even... So, we didn't get into the topics. We have to go back through the topics again. All right, well, hold on. I'm fighting demons over here, brother. So, I'm going to go through basically the gist of this, and then I guess we'll have a conversation about it when he puts his eye back in. It's a glass eye. Oh, I got it. Okay, um, hold on. Just wait a second here. So, the Ohio... Landowner Hunter Access Partnership was a cool program I found out about. Apparently, they do this out in the Midwestern states. And I I'm just think it's cool because it's moving closer to the East Coast, and I think it'd be a good thing to implement around here. So, basically, their DNR partners with private landowners to basically open their private land to the same rights as public land. I'm sure there's stipulations with where you can go, what you can do, blah, 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 blah. But I still think it's a really neat program, especially the way leasing goes on uh, for hunting now. It always goes to the highest bidder, and the dude could not even show up. He just outbid everybody else and then never comes out to hunt or comes to hunt once. And we found that that was kind of an issue with some of the local farms around here specifically one i'm not going to name that we got uh access to this year they want the more personal connection they actually want the pests to their crops taken care of instead of just a dude maybe coming out once not getting anything paid a bunch of money to do it so basically what ohio's offering is two dollars an acre for agricultural land to open up to public use and $30 an acre for bear with me I'm dyslexic perennial wildlife cover such as wetlands grasslands brushlands and forests and each contracts two years I think that's cool especially because Ohio is known for you know larger deer and stuff like that and I think it helps open up the lands to everybody it helps keep you know the numbers of the species in check and stuff like that and i think it'd be a cool thing maybe if it moved into pa and eventually new jersey i know brian has thoughts on why it wouldn't come to new jersey if you want to go into that uh, yeah sure why you out of breath you just been sitting there i haven't <laughs> um my teeth really hurt anyway you went out for your eye, bro. I know, and I came back with a toothache. Anyway, um, I I like the idea. I love the concept. And I do wish it would come to New Jersey, but I don't think we'll ever see it. I think people, you know, in a roundabout way of saying it, I think people are too stingy with their, with their land. That's, like, really my main gist of it. I think a lot of property owners are more interested... In Especially with farming being what it is today. Turning more profit off of their land than they are actually worried about controlling the pests. And I think the reason for that is due to the insurance on your crops every year. They don't really care all that much as long as they get some production. I know if pests come in and destroy everything, you have the insurance on that crop. You'll at least break even, which isn't ideal. But... I could see that. Um, there's a lot more to role. crop insurance than what you think. Um, I know. It, you don't get a rebate on it either. You don't get discounts on it. Stuff like that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if uh, snow geese hammer your field specifically and just destroy everything, you'll break even on that like it didn't happen. And I could see them turning a profit off of leasing their land to hunters... And that's more where the profit comes from, which, I mean, it's their land. They can do whatever they want with it. I think it's cool opening up private land to public hunting oh, and then I, having I think, the state like said, subsidize that. I think it's an amazing idea, but I don't think we'll ever see it. I just think these old farmers, and especially these new farmers, 
just don't want anybody on their property. Yeah. Which is understandable. There's a lot of stuff that goes on now. Assholes? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> that has to do with, you know, hunting accidents and... It's not even that. Stuff like, like, I've that. talked to... Well, that's so, what happened in the field behind your house. If somebody gets hurt, yeah, and that was yeah, and that was also in like the nineties or something. And anyway. it's only gotten worse because everybody wants a freebie now. Everybody wants a handout. Yeah, but the one thing I'll argue about: so if you lease your property to somebody, if he, if if say I lease property off of you, and I get hurt, I fall out of a deer stand, I step in a groundhog hole and break my leg. I can then sue you for, for, you know, for whatever it is. I can, I can technically sue you for that. If you sign, if we do the exact same thing, but the, it's permission based, so it's free. Under the state of New Jersey, you are now protected as a landowner from anything. I, I understand, but I'm sure this landowner hunter access partnership i think they're calling it olap for short and that's what i'm going to go as because i'm too dyslexic to say the whole name a million times over but i'm sure under the olap thing those protections come with it because they're not just going to open their land to public well, no, land no, they, but i'm telling everybody you, and their grandmother's going to go try to step in a groundhog hole to get you know a check for the rest but what of i'm life. saying is there's enough people, nice people that farm that just don't want anybody on their property. And they're you know, that might even be an excuse. I don't want you getting hurt and suing me. Well it could be an excuse. You they know, the state like of New they Jersey have, to have a reason because the culture used to be, yeah, come on in, do what you gotta do. Until people be ruined respectful. it. Respectful, yes, and, and then people ruined these it. These old farmers are at the or or now they saw the, the heydays of permission hunting. Where everybody was nice. Even if you look at it from a trail riding with four wheelers and dirt bike aspect, Dad said you used to be able to take your four wheeler or whatever and go from here, like almost all the way to Woodstown or all the way to Bridgeton without ever getting in trouble. You rode on the edges of the field, nobody cared. Now, God, you even ride your four wheeler in your own yard, somebody's calling the cops. And it's the same way with hunting. There was really respectful people, and then there was the age of a-holes and people that would leave trash, leave animals, you know, do whatever they wanted, shoot these spikes, whatever the cause was, they saw it. And then they finally said, "I'm no, I just don't want hunters. Like I was going to say before, I knocked on, in 2020, or in 2019, it was either 2019 or 2020, I knocked on 28 houses. And this was, I was going for like 10 acres or more property. Um, about five of them told me no right off the bat. Just said, no, no, thank you. We don't want, we don't want hunting. Um, one, one lady slammed the door in my face before I could even get anything out. And the other 22, well, let's, you could, we could probably split it down the middle. I don't remember exactly. I wish I would have wrote it down. But about 11 of them said, no, we have family or friends that already hunt it. And the other 11 was, well, we had a bad experience with a hunter, and we just don't allow that anymore. We don't want to take any kind of chance or any kind of risk. Mm -hmm. Whether it was they garbage the place up, they rode in at 3 o'clock in the morning, loud truck, bright lights... Waking everybody up, um, getting in trouble with a game warden was a couple people that told me, you know, shooting deer at night or shooting deer out of season or, you know, stuff like that. So there's a lot of people that ruined permission hunting. And like and, and like I said, this, this ULAP, uh, yeah, OLAP. It's a, OLAP is a great, great, great thing. But I just don't think we have the room in New Jersey for it. Like, I'm sure there will be five or six farms that sign up for it. They won't be around us. I just thought it, it was a neat idea. And maybe I'm too optimistic, but I think a lot of the protections and stuff would come with it to kind yeah, of but what I'm, dissuade I, that. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, even, like, there's protections in place right now. 
and people don't let anybody hunt. That's fair. Five dollars an acre isn't gonna make them go. Ooh, I need to let people hunt now. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's. I'm saying it's a start. It's, it's yeah, not no, it, it is, but yeah. I just don't think you're going to change anybody's mind. And that brings us to the other thing we have to probably talk about again. I know we don't want to, but yeah, okay. Let's let me just get it over with, especially because Lance just tagged me in a real base on it. Um, so it's been trending on TikTok. You know, you guys will hear this Tuesday morning, but today and yesterday it's been trending on TikTok and Instagram. Of uh, I don't even remember the kid's name. Cole. Starts with a P. Yeah, I know it does. Just give me a second I can here. look at my history. Uh, Cole Prevost. Prevost, Prevost. I really don't care what your last name is, dude. 15-year-old mm. from, I believe, Louisiana. Um, was videoed by two of his buddies. Beating his dog senseless. And shocking him in the water. Beating, shocking his dog senseless in the water. While while duck hunting. Now, he wasn't duck hunting in July. This video, I'm assuming, was taken late 2023, early 2024. For his sake. Yeah. He's already going to get buried on this one. So, this has probably been... Like, there was a couple boat ramp videos down in... I, I don't know. I think it was Mississippi. Of, you know, some kids got burned on that and shit like that. They were picking on one kid for, quote-unquote, shooting swing ducks. And, you know, that stayed in the media eye or the social eye for about a month this i think is not going to leave the social eye now so um, good what i was going to say like our take for those of you that know what we're talking about if you don't just tick tock it you you won't i hope to god you don't you'll probably find the, video. find the responses i've seen snippets of the video and i was disgusted from a one second clip so, basically, where I stand on this is the way his friends were laughing and the fact that he was so comfortable closed fist punching his dog in the water. And Overhead, whatnot. swinging down, mm -hmm. closed fist. He's done it before, and you're not going to... It, it's not really an age thing. I, I think anybody at any age knows that, you know, hitting... It's not right. Hitting your pet isn't it isn't right and unfortunately the dnr is not going to come down on him this is going to be an animal abuse case something like I that. i wish they could pinpoint that it happened on a piece of state land and then do something about it but either way you're not going to change someone with that attitude and i've been calling it personally and you may disagree but you're not going to change a monster somebody that's going to that even has the ability to do something like that to an animal. Especially at 15 years old. You're mm -hmm. supposed to love your that's where dog I was, at 15 years that's old. That's where I was going with that is... I think, and I mean, if there is any hope of him learning his ways, he shouldn't be tried as a minor for something like that. So the I get if it's like... If you did something like... Well, like when you were young, like... When, when we were younger, trespassing. Yeah. No, you're, no. I you're was, a dumb yeah. kid. Yeah. Beating an animal senseless in the water, that's not a dumb kid move inclination. That's uh -uh. not something that just naturally happens as a dumb kid. Should probably be charged as an adult. And I'm taming back my answer because the first time we did this, I probably said some things that wouldn't go over well. This is my calm response is he should be tried as an adult for the abuse that he did to that animal. Oh, this kid, if... I, you should probably try to tone it back, too, because <laughs> we kind of went off on the so, first try. So, as a dog own, as a hunting dog owner, you know, Goose has been my best friend for the latter part of two years now. Um, I see where I stand. It's a different... I, I was yeah, making a joke. Yeah, I was trying to yeah, lighten the mood. Relax. Yeah, you... It, as, you know, like I just said, as a somebody that's been a best friend of a hunting dog for the last two years, that dog will do anything it is capable of that you ask it to. And when I say capable, that dog, if it's not trained, does not know right from wrong. So you beating that dog is not the dog's fault. And unfortunately, the dog doesn't know that. 
it is your fault that you did not take the time to train said dog. And then you can't beat him into understanding what you want him to do anyway. Even if that... I think this was just cruelty. It wasn't trying to beat sense into the dog. This was just blatant cruelty. Oh, it, it absolutely is blatant cruelty, but it is... He was trying to beat... He was trying to beat sense into that dog, and it's but... it's his own fault for not yeah, it, actually you're training not the doing, dog. You're you not Yeah, you're not doing anything. They're not making the connection of what you're upset with. And this, this isn't like playing devil's advocate. The kid's a monster. Oh, he absolutely is. But... And I think he should be buried underneath the jail for that. And that's... I have no shame in saying that. Yeah. That was just a taste of some of the things we said. But yeah. Just so, keeping it a little bit toned but, down. But what, I, what are, I was getting into thoughts. before about the whole media eye, he has since since coming out, he's been, A, he deleted his Instagram or and his TikTok. I, I think he deleted his, his Instagram, but his TikTok has been deleted. His friend's TikToks have been deleted. His friend's Instagrams have been deleted. We still don't know the names of the kid that recorded the video, and we still don't know the name of the kid that was laughing in the background of the video. Um, they are they have been arrested. Good. Because they basically egged it on, did not stop it. Um, I think they should be tried just the same. I think he... and. But what um, with the social media presence before I, I forget for the third time, this kid will never come back from this. He will always be known as the dog beater, especially to the waterfowl community. Because even guys, even even bigger guys, have gotten in on this and said something about it. But th- this is this is what I w- where I was trying to get with all of that is if it was something like a dumb kid activity like trespassing or some something that in a, a kid would take the risk to do you might get crapped all over by the industry for it or whatever but you could come back from that this is not something you're going to come back from you're the fact that you're from louisiana and people from new jersey are talking about the awful thing you did like everybody knows now everybody knows the name Yep, it's disgusting. It and is. the 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 silver lining in this is that he will no long he will never own that dog again. The dog's already been taken into custody by um I, I by it, somebody else. It finds a good I hope it finds a good family. Yeah. Um uh, we will we will come back on this when we find out more if information. We may never. He's a minor. We may never hear anything about this again. Oh no, we will. And it's not from news sources, it'll be from other people. I think there'll be enough people on this that they're like I said, they're not nope. The social media presence is not going to let this slide. This kid just ruined his chances at ever doing anything in the outdoor space. He's yeah. going I mean, as far as in his hometown, he's he's going to be known at the boat ramp as the dog beater. Yeah. So do with that. Inf- oh, also, um, <laughs> what's really funny is Don't. what are you about to say? What we found when I was searching. What on the TikTok videos and stuff? No, when I was searching on Google. They doxed him. Yeah, no, I said it. Don't. I wouldn't. I'm not. I'm not I gonna egg that on. I'm not. Go, yes. I'm not. But yeah, it, I mean, it's it's very easy to see. Search, search his name on TikTok. Any video has his address and everything. It. We, we don't. don't we don't. Don't. Doing that. Don't go do anything. But I'm saying it's funny how quick that happened. Yeah, I I had a feeling that that's where you were going. Yeah, I uh, know. I'm not saying go do anything. Do not do that. But it's funny how fast people are... Mm. Vigilante justice. Yeah. Yeah. Which... It is what it is. No use in beating a dead horse. Those are our thoughts on the situation. So I hope he gets that. I mean... And... If if we don't judge him, you know... I don't ever get preachy here, but God has already judged him. So... And like I said, it doesn't fall under the dumb mistake category. Dumb kid category. But that's all. That's all for that. Uh, man, we went a whole eight minutes on that one. Yeah. Well, that was better than our first time. At least we toned it down a little bit this time. Yeah. Um. Do you have something you want to talk about, or do you want me to go into the next story? Just go ahead. I think we'll do this next story, and we'll wrap it up. Okay. So this next story. So a lot. I can't of, see too well in my left eye, so I can't creep. To know what I'm, I'm going to say everything out loud, but uh. 
So, obviously... Oh, you're doing it on that? New Jersey... Where at? Not being the biggest outdoors... It, it is, but not being the biggest reported outdoor state. Like it's The underdog of the, the underdog. hunting world. Yeah, the armpit of the United States. Um... I find things that are close to home that I would like to see implemented, like the Ohio thing that I talked about. And this other thing I wanted to talk about was in Pennsylvania, there's a bill that's trying to be passed where outdoorsmen and women, people that hunt, people that fish, people that trap. And this is, I feel like, the fact in most states that the people that govern over those things are appointed by whatever regime is in their state at the time, whether it be Democrat, whether it be Republican, whatever it may be. But these aren't voted on by the people that actually participate in these activities. In Pennsylvania, the bill is called House Bill 1508, would bring a process where people would you know, people in the outdoors community would vote on three people that they would like to represent them in what they do in all of their, you know, outdoors activities. People that I'm assuming they would vote for, you know, other people that are in the industry, maybe people with larger influence, things like that, but people that actually understand what's going on. And I think that's an awesome idea because then... You actually have people that are gunning for you. They're not going to make dumb laws that don't make sense, like getting rid of bear hunting in New Jersey. I know we beat that horse to death, too. But what I'm saying is it would be nice to have that local representation from the actual community so things can actually get done that make sense. Like, for example, Sunday hunting. I know if we actually appointed people in our community to go to Trenton, or wherever they end up making these laws at. I'm going to make a smart comment here. They would. Did you do your end of the year survey? I did it for Delaware. <laughs> they called me. <laughs> yeah. They called me like four times. They're like, oh, you went snow goose hunting, didn't you, bud? And I'm like, yeah. We went snow goose Did you get watching. anything? No. <laughs> So, so like I talked about it before with the Sunday hunting thing, I just want to cut in real quick. They have been asking about that. I, I think we'll see that soon. We're I know, only, but I'm we're saying... The only, we're, we're the missing puzzle piece with Sunday hunting. But I was just using that to bring an example. So what I'm trying to say is there would actually be laws that get implemented that are what the outdoorsmen want, that make sense for what the outdoorsmen need. Like, for example, we talked in the last episode about sheep's head. If we want to keep them around, I know... It's 50-50 about regulation and whatnot. But things like that, things that matter, things that keep our populations in check where we can still enjoy it and not overfish or overhunt or over anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it would be by people that actually know what they're talking about and not some dude in a suit that's gone in for whatever. Governor. Yeah, right, governor, yeah, whatever. secretary. They're just they're filling this position so they can or it's the have it in buddy. the log. To move up, or yeah, it's somebody's buddy. They're like, yeah, I'll do it. How much are you paying? So, I, I think I think that'd be a cool addition if New Jersey ended up doing it. Now, in the end, the governor does pick who gets appointed, but the people pick the three. So if they pick uh, three good okay. candidates, yeah. the governor doesn't have a choice to bring in his buddy or some now, Yahoo that I, doesn't. I, know I missed it. What state about. is this? Pennsylvania. Okay. Like I said, nothing's really reported on in New Jersey, but these are things that are happening around us. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ohio is a little bit of a stretch, but I've been there enough times. I guess it's kind of around us. That's your favorite state. It's my least. <laughs> what's my your, least favorite state to drive? What's through. your least favorite state overall? Yeah. Is it Michigan? No. No. Michigan's I Michigan's outdoors was very nice. What did you do outdoorsy in Michigan? We went backpacking. Oh. Okay, so what's your least favorite state? My Delaware? least favorite state. No. <laughs> she might listen to this. No. Whoa, bringing her up on the podcast now, huh? Oh, my God. No, Delaware's not a bad state. And they don't have... Sa- All right, relax. <laughs> and they don't have sales tax. That's fair. All right, go, what's, what is it? 
I have to think about this. <sighs> oh, you're going to hate me for this hot topic. Is it the state? Yeah. What is it? I think Florida's overrated as shit. Everybody thinks Florida's overrated, except for people over 60. Look at the communities there. Yeah. What do they lead in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard that over the weekend. Uh, I almost said, if you don't know, I almost said homeless societies. But uh, if you don't know what Florida old people communities lead the nation in, old people in, communities, it's Google STDs. It. Yeah, well, no, I was gonna tell to Google that. Would have yeah. been funny. Um, I think Florida's overrated for for what it is and what happens there. There are some cool things there, like the fishing is cool there. Mm-hmm. I love what Python Cowboy does, but the culture of Florida is big lifted trucks in suburbs. Uh, uh yeah. Well, at least in the areas I've been. I've never been to, like, the hillbilly areas, but... That's, like, the panhandle of Florida's yeah. hillbillies. But I feel like even some of them kind of identify as Louisiana, or at least they sound like it. Is that even... Is that even the next... I don't know. I'm pretty know. sure. <laughs> Let's look this up before I is sound it, like a total idiot. I think it's Mississippi. I think it's Florida, Mississippi, Louisiana. Didn't you win the geography, B? Yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> And we still don't know that. Fifteen years ago. Actually. Florida. (laughs) Are we both wrong? Alabama. Yep. Florida Uh, does not touch Louisiana. So let me rephrase that. that. They must identify as Mississippi or Alabama because they sound like it. Okay. Is that better? No, I I mean, I still sound like it. I think the panhandle would prefer to go Alabama. I've been a couple of them. I, I know the north's different. I've never been to northern Florida, but... I guess if I had to pick a state, it would be that. Nope, Arizona, too damn hot. But they have cool rocks. They have. So does New Mexico. Hmm. I don't know. I haven't been to Arizona. I can't judge. I've never been to Arizona either, but I'm never going to Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> we might. Nope. There's hunting there. Uh, not for me. What the Oryx? Check back in a few years. Maybe 50 years. Maybe he'll change. I won't. When your bones get cold when you're old. That's not going to happen. Mm. That's not how that works. The older you get, the colder you get. Oh, that's fair. God, I can't wait to be 70 then. Because right now I'm living my life at like 100 degrees. Yeah, facts. <laughs> um, I thought there was something else we wanted to talk about. I just... See, this is the really bad part. I tried to sound really smart for those articles, <laughs> and, then and then I totally... Misrepresent the United States. (laughs) And I get it wrong while (laughs) shitting on Florida. (sighs) Fishing's nice, though. (laughs) Way to bring that full circle. (laughs) Not all bad. That would be something I'd be Just to lift the trucks in the suburbs. That's the bad part. So, like, 96% of Florida? (laughs) Yeah. And Orlando's overpriced. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um... What's your favorite state? Hmm. What's your first off? What's your? Uh, you already said your least favorite. Arizona. What's your favorite state? And then I'll come. I'll get back. to Are we counting? Do we have we had to have been to that state? I think it would make more sense. North Carolina. North Carolina. It is hot and it is muggy down there, Why but it? it is beautiful. North Carolina is the prettiest sunset sunrise I've ever seen in my life, hands down. I have fond memories of Tennessee I, I, from when I was younger. Yeah. And if you're a resident in Tennessee for more than 180 days a year, no sales tax. Hmm. I guess from states I've been to, I'd probably have to say Tennessee. I like... What'd you go to Tennessee for? My grandmother lived there. Oh, okay. For, until my pop-up died. So we used to go down there at least once a year. Oh, really? Not more, yeah. Huh. Uh, and they lived on the side of a mountain. That was when when we had the Saturn bombs a few weeks ago that I yeah. set off. They came from there? No. Oh. <laughs> I have a story about that. Okay. My mom lived on the side of a mountain, right? You know what happens when you go up a mountain? You gotta come down? No, the elevation changes. You know what happens when you're lower on the mountain and you shoot off a Saturn bomb? No. It hits the neighbor's car and sets the car alarm off. <laughs> you know what you do after that? One. You pack up the fireworks and pretend you aren't lighting them off. <laughs> Come knocking on the door. Ma'am? They never, your... they never knocked, but that was my uncle's fault. Oh, yeah. Bl- always blame it on the He's uncle. He's the one that lit it. <laughs> I was 10. 
And you probably would have got blamed if they came knocking. Hmm. Yeah, you can't beat a 10 year old. Well, a stranger can't beat a 10 year old. Legally. <laughs> All right, we, All right. We need to get off of here before we say more stupid stuff. Well, as usual, go check out our sponsors. They're in the link of all of our social media bios. And if they're not, go follow the Instagram. You'll find them. Also, I put Papa Earl's on pepperoni pizza. That was a solid move. Yep. That was actually a really <laughs> solid move. I ended up eating three quarters of the pizza by myself. Well, you would have done that anyway. No, nah, I would have probably got halfway through. Choking it down. And those patch, you can't polish a turd. Oh, yeah. No. I don't know why I made that face when you said Pats. I hate Pats pizza. Sorry. Yeah. It's all um, right with Papa Earl's. Well, and everything's all right with Papa Earl's. Uh, once again, Ooh. this has been. Okay. Can I demonstrate my rape whistle? Sure. Make it quick. Oh, I get my Quill Creek call tomorrow. According to USPS. I got uh, one of Coon Creek's whistles, and it's really nice, and it's Louie, and it matches my uh, call lanyard. Louie Vuitton, umbrella when I walk through the rain. <laughs> All right, this has been episode 97 <laughs> of the Marsh Boys Podcast. Please tune in next week. Rate us five stars if you don't hate us. Bye. <laughs>